Hey guys, this is Shock from Shock Block, and I'm here to help you guys out today with a little tutorial. Uh, have you ever wanted to watch your favorite show from the 90s or early 2000s, the time before we had 16 by 9 aspect ratio for uh, being the standard on TV? <laughs> well, you can watch shows like that that are in 4 by 3 aspect ratio from a streaming service uh, using a a PC connected to a CRT TV through um, a uh, converter. And let me demonstrate that it works. What the heck? Oh, okay. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> now it is working. I had to just uh, do some adjusting with OBS. And you might be wondering like, what? using OBS and like yeah there's an OBS um, method I'm gonna show you it's a it's a little OBS trick I'm gonna show you how to get this to work properly with the aspect ratio because oftentimes when you just convert uh, through a downscaler or through a HDMI to component uh, converter you just get uh, letter boxes you get black bars around the uh, image and that's not what we want uh, that's not the proper uh, way to view these on a CRT. You want to get uh, the uh, the video uh, to be uh, perfectly in frame and proper aspect ratio. So in order to get that um, to work, I'm going to show you how to achieve that in this video. Okay, so first you're going to need an HDMI to component adapter. You can get these off of Amazon for like 15, maybe like 20 bucks is like the most I think that they go for. They, they're not that expensive, they're pretty cheap. So just get this little device. And for those of you who do not have a component input on your CRT TV, you can just use a downscaler uh, with composite or S-Video. I recommend S-Video because it's, it's the best input next to component. And if you don't have S-Video, you can just use this uh, regular one I found on Amazon that's pretty cheap as well. And for this video, I'm using my high definition gaming PC, I guess you could call it my gamer PC that can support VR uh, that I use for pretty much all my games, uh, just to show that you can achieve this with just about any basic graphics card of today, like any like new graphics card, you don't have to use a really old one, like most people suggest you don't have to use an old AMD Radeon one. So I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 2060, and I don't think you really need to have an NVIDIA GeForce brand, but uh, that would probably make things easier on you. So as you can see, I have all my cables hooked up like so. This is how you would essentially hook them all up to the box. It's pretty simple. All right, so you come on to your desktop here. You right click, you go to NVIDIA control panel, then you see that nothing's showing up as a second monitor. That's okay. You just gotta go up to set, uh, set up multiple displays. Type my display. Click, click on where it says my display is not shown. Rigorous display detection. Yes. Okay. So um, that doesn't always work right off the bat. Of course, you usually have to restart your computer. So let's just try that. Alright, so after restarting the computer, uh, you should see this other monitor thing uh, detected. Now, it's not going to show up in your CRT, of course, because it's, it's, just, it's displaying in a resolution that the CRT does not recognize. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change that, customize, and looks like I already have some kind of customization thing here, but that's for, that's for my monitor, not my uh, TV. So we're going to click Create Custom Resolution. So I've already gone through and tried a whole bunch of other resolutions out with my CRT TV. I've done a lot of experimenting with it in the past, and I found out the ideal uh, resolution would either be to have it at 1280 by 240, which is technically a super resolution in a way, but people like to max it out like to a super res super resolution to like 2580, I think, by 240. But I just like to keep it simple because it usually makes it easier for me to use the monitor anyway this way if I have it at just 1280 by 240. Um, so I just use these settings. And then uh, this is only ideal though if you want to use it for RetroArch. If you want to use it for RetroArch and you just, you just change the scaling options in RetroArch 
uh, to suit it, then it like makes it work really well with this. However, if you're using anything else besides retro arts, like if you want to play, uh, like I don't know, a game that was ported to PC that's on Steam that you bought, like uh, say Disney's classic games with like Aladdin and Lion King, you want to play that in four x three on your CRT TV. I actually got that to work. Um, you'll want to use these settings. Um, and let me just demonstrate why you want to use these and how they work. Because I had to learn this the very uh, try-hard, experimenty way in order to get the right, just the right resolution. So my friend on, well, I guess I wouldn't really call him a friend. He's just a, you know, a good colleague, a good, nice guy named Jam on the CRT Discord. He's really, he's really nice. He really helps me out. Um, whenever I'm in a jam, <laughs> no pun intended, intended there. Uh, so, so after experimenting, I was like, Hey, I got this resolution of 240p, but I want to actually, you know, make it so the screen isn't squished and it's actually like fits the screen properly. And you can see everything around in the, inside the actual, you know, box inside the actual, uh, screen. You can see everything and it's not all squished or like a small looking and so he helped me out with like what values to pop, to pop in and he just said like keep keep changing the top values up here until it's big enough to where you can see it and that actually worked really well and you will see that it works so you just pop these in by clicking automatic and go to manual and then just change up the values to exactly what i have Click test. So you click test, and you hit yes. And then you will see it on your CRT for a second. You'll see it uh, come up for a split second. It'll recognize it, and you click OK. And then after it's tested it, then you'll be like, oh, wh where is it? Oh, it's up here. You click this, click apply. And then it isn't working right now. <laughs> it's not working off the bat. But there is a trick to get around this if it doesn't work immediately when you do that. So just right click, go to display properties, uh, right click your desktop, go to display properties, or display settings, display settings, sorry. And then you just go to the monitor you're trying to project to, which is a smaller one, obviously. And then um, you go to advanced display settings, and then you go to Display adapter properties for display form. And then you click on list all modes. And then and we scroll down until we find our custom resolution 940 by 480, which is still technically the 240 resolution we used earlier. Click apply, click keep changes, click OK. And now if you look, it says 940 by 480 is the desktop resolution, but the active signal resolution is 1280 by 240, so it's, two, it's still technically 240p. And then if we look at our CRT, it is displaying it. So, hooray! But we are not done yet. So, everyone says on the CRT forums, I, I always look this up in the CRT forums, and everyone says, you have to have a special graphics card, a old Radeon graphics card that supports CRT MU driver. Um, I'm just showing the game booting up just to show that the game is running on my PC like normal. Let's just play the game and I'll demonstrate that um, it's playable and that it matches the aspect ratio mostly. Hey guys, real quick here, I just want to let you guys know that we are not getting off track in the video here at all. I'm just showing it off in a video game that is 4x3. You can use this exact same method that I'm going to demonstrate here with streaming services on your computer with uh, a show from Netflix or from HBO Max or something like that. I'm going to show that later in the video working again, but I just want, I just want you guys to know that I am not getting sidetracked here. I just thought I should also mention that this can be used on a video game from Steam that is a remaster as well, just so I can cover multiple 
things here and not just one thing. I'm just demonstrating multiple things here. That's all I'm doing. I'm not getting sidetracked. I just want everybody to know that the video isn't like, oh, I thought this was a video about TV shows, not about video games. Like, no, it, it applies to both. As you can see, the top part is a little cut off. There's some letterboxing going on. Uh, I don't know if you could fix this with OBS. Maybe you could fix it with OBS? I suppose I could. Let's, let's give that a shot. So we're going to go back up in here. And we're going to set the uh, main display back to my regular monitor, my flat screen. And then we're going to try to use the OBS trick to fix it so that it is not letterboxed. Okay, so I've got the Disney's Aladdin game brewed up here from Steam. And we're going to go ahead and start the Super Nintendo version, because it's just like, whatever, who cares which version we play. Could be Sega Genesis, could be Super Nintendo, who really cares. So, let's get into the actual game, let's get into the first level. We pause the game, and then I actually already have this mostly configured on the... Uh, on the CRT, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So what we have is we have OBS opened up over here. And if you go to your display capture and you have the uh, desktop that you use, uh, you make a, <coughs> I guess, I guess you would, you wouldn't have display capture. You would just click plus and you click on display capture and then you would uh, create one Click OK, and then just um, select the display of your regular monitor. Make sure you select your regular monitor that's playing the game. If you click OK on your side, I'm not going to click OK because I don't want another display capture. Um, so, <laughs> which funny is it made anyway. Anyways, so you make a display capture source or whatever. Display capture, let's say you display your desktop, and then you basically right click on the scene over here make sure you click right click scene do not right click display capture that won't work i mean it will work but it won't it won't allow you to fix the resolution so right click scene go to full screen projector and click on monitor the second monitor for your crt i've already done that so i'm not going to do it right now and then after you've done that go to edit uh make sure actually like like right click on the uh display so you make sure you are going to edit that one. You edit this one, so you right click that, click on full screen, no, no, sorry. Click on the transform, transform, edit, transform. And then, as you can see, there's a bunch of different options here. So, so by default, this will be set to 920 by 1080 or 720 or whatever resolution you have it set to. So, basically, the position, this will be, so uh, move this uh, box, like to left and to the right. Um, I believe this one, um, let's see. Okay, so this one moves it to the left and right. This one will move it up and down. This is up and down, this is left and right. And so then this one will stretch it. This will stretch it to the left and right. It'll stretch it to the left and right. And then this one will stretch it up and down make sure I'm, I'm right about that yeah and sometimes obs will be weird and not let you do it properly like like one of these like if you start doing it immediately sometimes both of these will stretch it uh left to right and i don't know why it does that but what i did to like fix that was i just i did this i started clicking on these i started switching between these like just randomly like i don't know it just started it just fixed it somehow uh also it was having this problem where like the very the very right part of the CRT screen would be gray, like this would be grayed out, like there'd be a gray line right here, so you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to see the entire screen, the entire, entire game screen. You just see would have it be cut off on the on the right side with, with some gray, which was weird. But once I started playing around with this and started just changing this randomly a lot, and then I clicked on reset right here after doing that, then it fixed itself somehow. So I just clicked on these options like over and over and started changing it a lot and then it just fixed itself i don't know how that works but anyway that's what i did and then i just started changing the values on this so you gotta what sucks is you can't just grab this and then just move it around and then just change whatever you want uh i mean you can you can definitely grab it and start trying to change the resolution 
but it's not going to, or the position, the, the size, but it's not, in the position, it's not going to do anything to help you. Like, it will definitely influence this, but the problem is, is that it's, it's not going to give you the result you want, unfortunately. You're going to have to go over here and click and hold down until the numbers are moving. And then, as you can see, while I am doing that, the screen is stretching to the left. It's like, or not, it's not stretching. This is moving it to the left. It's moving it to the left very, very slowly. It does it very slowly, but you're going to have to be patient. Just have to be patient and just have to line it up precisely as precisely as possible as much as you, just like however you want it but i mean like how you want it is very specific of course because you want it to match the box um and make sure that the windows bar is in the box if you're in full screen like i am if you're in full screen then make sure that the windows bar is down here matching it if you're in window mode then you can just um ignore that actually it might be better if you're in window mode because then you can just make sure to ignore the windows bar and just have it be above it and then it could be also uh, below the uh, the window uh, display thing up here, the little title thing, title bar. And you can just have it be inside the box. I guess that would make it easier for some people, but uh, I like to have it in full screen so I get the full screen. Full screen experience, you know. Um, I just want everything to be covered. So um, basically, and then as you can see, while I um, click and hold on this, it will slowly stretch the screen to the left or to the right. Um, it will either increase or decrease the size of the screen of the left and right area. So you can play around with this until um, until you get it just right, and it will do that. Like OBS will do that. It's trying to re-synchronize re the the you know the screen and everything. And of course, right now I don't have it. Like you can see, the life bar is cut off a bit. On the left there that's because i was you know playing with it and i i don't have it set up like to the best like size and position possible but it just takes some extra tweaking and it takes patience and once you have it set up the right way you can just enjoy your game have a great time and you're like yeah check it out it's proper it's proper aspect ratio of the game on your crt and so let me show you that this is possible with a streaming service as well because that's Mainly why I made this video to show off that you don't have to have a Roku Express Plus and you don't have to have a PS3 or an Xbox 360 just to play Netflix or Hulu on your CRT TV. You can just use your computer with a HDMI to component converter. So let me just show you that this works on streaming services as well. All right, so I'm signed into HBO Max on Google Chrome on my computer and we're just gonna go to a little sidebar here. Um, actually, oh, there's a search button, sorry. It's kind of hard to do this while I'm recording. So click on the search bar and then just, I'm just going to type in Adventure Time. Let's let's just pick, oh, actually, no, we, we got to pick something that's 4x3. So I guess Billy and Mandy will work. I think that's 4x3. So we're just going to do a 4x3 show. Um, let's pick this one, this episode. And I could have chose uh, Paramount Plus. That would have been probably much easier for a 4x3 show, but we're just going to pick this one. Because I wanted to, I wanted to pick something that's, I guess, more common. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like people like Cartoon Network more than Nickelodeon, but I mean, I like Nickelodeon a little bit more than Cartoon Network. I, I mean, I kind of like them equally in a way. It's, it's kind of weird. I like the old Nickelodeon shows. And I like the kind of Cartoon Network, like old and new, and like mostly. Anyway, um, so we have HBO Max. The show is in four by three. And let's see, so it's already showing up. Uh, this is the prior resolution, prior position I had for Aladdin, the Aladdin game earlier. So let's just fix this real quick and make sure it's gonna work properly. Okay, I don't know if all CRTs do this, but I'm gonna point this out for the tutorial. So my CRT likes to do this where whenever I try to set it up like and fit it inside the box right here, it'll have this weird like warping curve on the side It'll do this on the other side of it, of course, as well. But it'll have this warping curve on the side. And basically, when you see that, when you see this warp, it just goes like... It like has this warp where it's like not... It's not up and down at all. It's not <coughs> correct looking. So just basically stretch it over to where that warp just goes away. 
you're not going to lose a whole lot of the screen. You're not going to lose a whole lot of the picture. So it's not going to be a big deal. Just just like stretch it just a little bit. Just just move it to the to the side just a little bit so it if that's off screen. So you don't see any warping. So you don't see any like weird um, <coughs> line going down where it's just like not straight because I mean we don't want to see that. It doesn't look right. And so. It's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to miss a whole lot of the screen. So don't worry. It's not going to like crop off like anything major. So just go ahead and move it to the side. All right. So earlier I was having trouble trying to figure out how I could get it. So I could figure out like exactly how to get the frame of like just the top area measured properly uh, to hit to like fit the box, fit the uh, frame. And I was like, Oh, I hopefully maybe uh, I'll play the video and th like a character will try to touch the like have a character will like do like a thing where like some people will go go up to the top of the frame. I was like, oh, this helps a lot. This character is moving his arms all the way up to the top of the frame, like almost to the top of the frame, basically the top of the frame, and so now I can actually position the screen properly into the frame. So if I just click on the full screen button. Again, you know, we click out of full screen, go back into full screen, then the Windows Windows bar will go away, and I can click play, and then just wait for the little thing at the bottom to go away, and there you go. It's playing the movie, or not the, playing the cartoon, it's playing the show on CRT TV, and it's perfectly in the aspect ratio. Um... Let's see, the only problem I saw uh, earlier was, what I noticed earlier was that there did seem to be some warping on the side. It's really nice sweater for me. I'm going home. Hang on a second. And then you squished him! Oh, he knitted this really nice sweater for me. Going home. Okay, so it's not doing it anymore. So I guess I fixed it. But earlier, this uh, side part was like warping over here to where, like, even though I had this covered up and you could see the full frame of the shot of the screen, it was like warping. Uh, I was doing this, like, sort of like wavy line look on the left here. But now it fixed itself somehow or just stopped doing that. I almost thought that was because I'm using an HDMI converter instead of a like display port to VGA to component converter like Majigger like um, method instead. But it turns out no, that's not why I guess because I'm still I haven't I haven't switched it yet. I haven't switched it yet. I'm still using this method right here. So I, I don't know. Um, it just fixed itself. So there we go. It's working. And it's centered, and the aspect ratio was correct. So there you go. That's how to get a 4x3 show or game uh, that isn't, like, ordinarily 4x3 or isn't ordinarily wanting to be on a CRT TV and you want it to line up properly. That's how you do it. You use OBS with the full screen projector, and you adjust the size and position. And there you go. Uh, it's, pro it's, it's probably one of the most complicated methods to get it to work, but I mean, I'm sure the CRT MU driver thing is also complicated because you have to track down a old graphics card that is probably hard to find or just, you know, you have to spend a little bit more extra money on this whole thing just so you can get it to work properly without just, you know, using your current PC with your current graphics card and then just use HDMI like I did. Like, it's just crazy to me that everyone's just always saying, yeah, just go out and get the an old AMD Radeon graphics card, get this very specific thing, and then use this very specific software. I understand that that method works. I understand, okay? I, I get it, okay? I get that that method works. But this method works too. So, like, don't at me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, what the heck? Why is no one talking about this method? Like, I discovered this through just asking on the CRT Discord a bit and just experimenting myself. Um, and I was just like, oh, this method just works. I mean, technically, like, you need to have a TV that has component input. Uh, I guess if you don't have a TV that has component input, you're kind of uh, out of luck. Well, no, Past Shock. We just learned earlier that you can use a downscaler. But 
uh, if you want to play games and not have any lag that you might have, you might experience a little bit of lag if you use a downscaler, then yes, you will want to use something that can do a straight S-video or composite out through VGA. So you want to get one of these devices uh, from Jam on eBay or somewhere else. Uh, Jam, the guy I learned this method from on the CRT Discord, he sells these converters that converts a straight out signal uh, to VGA, and it's really handy and really cool. Um, and if you can get one of these for 50 bucks uh, from him, if he, if he has it in stock, you might have to ask him on the CRT Discord to make you one because uh, he doesn't always have them in stock. But if you can manage to get one, they are great devices. They work really well. They are really well made. Uh, Jam's an awesome person. He's very, very good at making stuff like this. Um, so that would really aid you if you're trying to play video games straight out from your PC and you don't have a component input on your TV. Um, straight, straight up convert uh, VGA to uh, composite. And that will work the same way. You just need to have a either HDMI to, to VGA or a display port to VGA and just like convert it through there. It'll work the same. Um, and I actually recommend DisplayPort to VGA and because usually that gives you a better signal than HDMI to VGA. In my, in my <coughs> testing, it has done that better. Anyway, yeah. So there you go. I hope this helps out a lot of people on the internet because I've noticed a lot of videos and a lot of people on Reddit being confused. I'm like, oh, I guess I have to go get a Roku Express Plus, or I guess I have to go get a PS3 or Xbox 360 and just do Netflix through there. And the thing is, is that I like Netflix. Uh, it's cool, but it doesn't have, like, everything I want to watch. Like, I really like watching old cartoons like this, and uh, that's on Paramount Plus and HBO Max, and... Well, there's no way to stream those on a PS3 or 360 or a Roku device that's old, an old Roku. Like an, like those old ones probably don't support those apps. At least I'm pretty sure they don't. And, any, and anyway, I don't know where to get a Roku Express Plus nowadays because those are pretty hard to find because they're old. They're from like 2016. And like you'd have to go track it down some, on some store or on eBay or something. And they're probably going to be at least... I don't know, like $40 or so, which isn't bad, uh, but I don't know. Um, it, I just feel like I, when, when, when I, the, the thing is, when I went to go search for an Express Plus, I couldn't find it anywhere. I just couldn't find one anywhere. It just, uh, I just it couldn't see it. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't find it on eBay. It just wasn't there. So I don't know where you could buy it. I mean, I'm sure you can find it somewhere on some store. Uh, I've heard Goodwill usually has them, but when I tried looking on the Goodwill website, it wasn't there. I couldn't find it on there. So, good luck finding one of those Express Pluses. Um, so, I would say just try this method. See if it works for you. Um, if you don't have a component CRT TV, uh, it's the same method. Just use, your OB just use a downscaler. Just use OBS, and bam. So, HDMI through the downscaler. Do composite or S video. S video is better. I think S video is best if you can do S video. But if you if it's just composite, composite's fine. Composite's fine, um, as, especially if you have one of those uh, like CRTs with a DVD built into it, a DVD player built into it. Usually, I if I have one of those and the composite actually looks really good. Surprisingly, it looks really good. I've played YouTube videos on there and it actually looks really clear. It's crazy. It's weird to me because I'm like, wait, I thought component was supposed to look was, would look like this. Anyway. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention is that when you want to get this off your screen, you just want to get the current thing that you're projecting from OBS. You want this off your you want to get this off your screen. Just move your mouse over here, and you'll know your mouse is on this screen when it's really big on this screen and not tiny like it is on the uh, flat screen. So just move your mouse over here, right click, and click close, and then it'll go back to. Uh, not being projected. Okay, so once you get your positioning and your resolution size or your size of the box screen size uh, figured out, you can go to your uh, Windows taskbar and type in snipping tool. Uh, just type in S I or just type in S N I, and then it will come up. And then when this is open, this is a screenshot taking tool. You just click new, and then. You just select uh, the portion of the screen that you want to screenshot 
and then you have your little screenshot of the options you had. Uh, please note that these may not always like work again. Uh, the second the second time you do it, it may not always work for, like precisely the way you want it. Like this these options these uh, numbers, if you just put them in, it might not match uh, precisely what you had before. So you might have to do it again, but you'll you just just uh, just you know this is so. But this will at least give you a. This will at least give you a good start if you do it again. You'll at least have a good start, uh, a good framework for what you want, um, so you don't have to just sit there and wait uh, like an extra two minutes for the thing to stretch out and mess around and so for so long. So this is this is this is still pretty helpful. Okay. Anyway, I hope this helped people out on the internet, and this is shocking the block. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Wait, what? What's it coming out of? Is it coming out of the actual? Sp Is it coming out of the C T T R T? Oh wow! How is it? How is it coming out of the C R T? I didn't plug in the audio. Oh, oh right, I did. I did plug in the audio. That's why. I, I usually use external speakers when I plug in stuff like I'm not used to like being like plugging in the uh, actual speakers of the CRT But that's pretty cool. Um, it's it can use the speakers on the CRT. I mean, of course it can. It's just audio <laughs> Anyway